Hacienda. Oh, thank you so much for coming. You reported a prowler, ma'am? Yes, about 20 minutes ago. I looked up and there was this man looking in the window. Which window? It was one of the back windows. Oh, there's an empty lot on that side, isn't it? Yes. When he saw that I'd seen him, he jumped away from the window and I, I phoned you. We better check that lot for footprints, Webb. Roger. Now, if you'll show me the window. Oh, yes, of course, right this way. Well, you been sleeping? No, just resting. I don't sleep very much at night. And that's where you saw the face, huh? No, in here. I've been lying on the bed resting and listening to the radio, and... I thought if I took a bath, I might be able to sleep better. And afterwards, just as I was putting my robe on, I looked up and there he was. Well, if I was you from now on, I'd keep the curtain closed. You ever notice in a bank, they always keep the counting room out of sight so the customers won't get tempted? I suppose you're right. I just didn't think. Oh, it's you. No footprints out here. The grass has just been cut and it'd be kind of hard to spot. Then again, maybe the lady's just imagining things. He was just as plain as your friend's face just now. I'm sorry to cause you all this trouble, but I do get nervous at night and... That's our job, ma'am. You always alone at night? Yes. A maid comes in daytimes, but she leaves right after dinner. Mm -hmm. Well, from now on, be sure and pull the shades and lock the door. I will. Think you feel comfortable enough for us to leave now? Oh, yes, I'm perfectly all right now. I'm sure you are. Oh, well, good night, ma'am. Good night, and thank you. Call us again if you need us. Yes, I will. is quite a dish. Here. I don't suppose there's any use asking you to stop by tonight and take a squint at our collection. Pretty plush if you can get it. <laughs> you know, the wife spent the whole day today polishing up those specimens we found out around Barstow. She's pretty proud of them. I wish I could convince you a hobby's a good thing, especially for the things you learn on what the her side. angle is. Huh? Say, I wonder what her angle is. Her? No angle. They're well healed. You know, there's history slathered over every square foot of this country of ours. And one time or another, me and the old lady has dozed it out. Like those ghost towns I tell you about. We never would have seen them if it hadn't been for our rockology. Is she married? Yeah, sure she is. Some crackpot squeezed enough dough to retire and then works for the fun of it. Can you tie that? <laughs> If I had his moolah, I'd take the hills. That house must have set him back plenty. Yeah, maybe 35, 40 grand in this market. Probably beats his mother. <laughs> Heads or tails? Never mind, bud. I'll check us in. Oh, 
Thank you. I was just passing by. I thought I'd check to see if everything's still all right. Well, yes. Sir. At least I think so. Do prowlers generally come twice in the same night? No, but we do. It's part of the job. Hope I didn't wake you up. Oh, no, I was just having a cup of coffee. We're generally supposed to make checkup calls, especially where women are concerned and when they're alone. Well, if you're sure everything's all right, I'll be on my way. Oh, wouldn't you like some coffee? Yeah, thanks. It's not too much trouble. Oh, no, it's no trouble at all. Well, then uh, make mine milk if you have it, huh? Just sit down and I'll get it. It's like somebody around here has been in show business. That's right. Actors, huh? I tried to be. It didn't work out. You're good looking enough. What's the matter? Didn't you have enough pull? I was just a little short of talent. Aren't you going to have your milk? Oh, yeah, sure. You know, I. Got to keep in shape. I suppose you're married. Most of the good-looking girls I run into are. Is this questionnaire in the line of duty? <laughs> Could be. I am married. Happily married. I was happily married to a girl like you. I wouldn't leave you alone nights. John doesn't. And that's because they're almost never cooked right. He's here 24 hours a day. Tender yellow young squash we sell down here at the ranch market. I give them to the wife. And by the way, there's a little lady who really knows squash. Well, she puts them over a slow flame. I hear that program every night. Is, uh, is he your husband? He is. No kidding. Isn't he the one who always signs yeah, off with, I'll be man, seeing you, Susan? That's right. Yeah, well, then you're Susan. Disappointing, though it may be. I am. Well, that's a real coincidence, isn't it? My name's uh, Webb, Webb Garwood. Webb Garwood? Somehow that, that sounds familiar. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you from? Indiana, Terre Haute. Did you ever see East Indianapolis play Terre Haute High School basketball? Of course I have you. <laughs> You're not that way. Nobody else. <laughs> you played center. We got beat three years in a row because of you. Oh, well, uh, there were four other guys on the team, you know? I know, but you were the only one we're really afraid of. <laughs> uh, didn't you get a scholarship to some college or something? Yeah. I, I don't follow the support pages very well. I, I don't seem to remember what happened after that. Scored the winning point on our first game. After the second game, they put me on the bench. Coach said they were trying to teach us to work as a team. I got him to open good right in front of the whole squad. And then on, he had it in for me, that's all. Told the athletic director and they stopped my dough. That's another one of my lousy breaks. If hadn't been for that, I'd have had my four years of college. Have a nice soft job in one of those big bond houses, and I'd be eating lunch every day in the university club. I used to clip your picture out of the tarot paper. Yeah. Who would ever have thought? That I'd turn out to be just another dumb cop, huh? Oh, no. I wasn't thinking that at all. I was just thinking how funny it is the way you meet people. Yeah. You know, people you never thought you'd meet. They say there's no such thing as a native Californian. Yeah, those were the days. No kidding. I wish we'd met there instead of here. What street do you live on there? Lakeview. Oh, well, that explains it. You had sidewalks and lawns out in front. I lived down on Carrington. My old man's idea of success was a buck twenty an hour union scale. He's a maintenance worker in the oil fields. He must have had a dozen chances to cut loose on his own, make himself some real to wildcat, but he's too yellow to risk his buck twenty an hour. Oh, he never made it. Well, it's just about that time, you night owls. 
This John Gilvray bringing to a close the ranch market. It's almost a signing off time. Special. But before I say good, I've got to check to out too. I guess you'll feel safe from now on, huh? Finest selection on the West Coast. Wouldn't you like to stay and have breakfast with us? I'd like you to meet my husband. Sorry, but no can do. I've got my reports to make out. Where the bees get their honey from thousands... We've been having a lot of trouble with prowlers lately. I'll drop by once in a while to see if everything's okay. Won't that be too much trouble? Well, it could be, but I don't think it will. After all, we Hoosiers have to kind of stick together, don't we? Sure do. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Exactly 3.58 a.m. and uh, 50 seconds. I'll be with you again tomorrow night. Good news, folks. The cost of living is going down. Good night to everyone. I'll be seeing you, Susan. You got one of those, uh, businesses? Well, if they could only see me now, I'd be the envy of the force if they knew about this, huh? Those guys, there's nothing but hamburgers night off or no night off. They don't mind, though. Hamburgers, the only thing they're used to. You don't like being a policeman, do you? Why should I? Well, for one thing, you look nice in the uniform. This is the only uniform I like. Quite a collection. You got any guy Lombardo? They're not what they seem. Those are my husband's programs, all of those shells. He has them recorded so he can listen and improve his diction. There's nothing wrong with being a policeman. Nothing wrong with digging ditches either, or delivering the mail. I'd rather be one of those guys who shows up around 10 in the morning after having a big argument with himself over whether he'll drive the station wagon today or the convertible. What are you looking for, cigarettes? Yeah, fresh out. You, you don't smoke, do you? No, but my husband does, only he keeps them locked up. Are you kidding? Well, no, he keeps a carton of more in there all the time. If you were a good locksmith, I could give you back. Hold that. Hmm? Give me a bobby pin. Does he keep everything locked up? Mostly. You too? That's a leading question. <laughs> Probably does. A mean, jealous guy like that wants his wife all to himself. I can't say I blame him, though. I'd do the same myself. There. See how silly it is to keep things locked up? Maybe. But it did delay you for a little while. Is that all he wants, just to delay things? Sometimes a little delay does the trick. than it was to open. You ever dance? You like that? I used to. So die. Another thing I think you like is tree-ripened fruit for dessert these mild September evenings. The wife serves fruit and coffee every night, and I want to tell you that when I lean back from the table and take that first puff off my cigarette, I think he was watching. I know all's well with the world, and the wife knows it too. Good idea when you There's only one good thing about this arrangement. What's that? At least you always know what he's doing. Cheese and apple. He always knows what I'm doing too. Bears, one of the best food like making me sandwiches tonight? Really? Amazing. He'll know. Why not? Amazingly priced. Now I got a real. What's a guy like that look like anyway? 
Oh, just like a normal, decent, middle-aged American husband, which he is. You don't make him sound very exciting. A lot of good things aren't exciting. That's what's good about them. Why did you marry him, Susan? Because I loved him. Try again. Why did you marry him? While I was knocking around at movie studio gates, I, I found out a few things about myself. I, I married him because I wanted a family. That's why we got this big house. I wanted kids. So have you got them? No. What other reason was there? To stay away from men like you. But it didn't do any good, did it? You're a real cop, aren't you? You want everything free. Oh, you're wrong. People never give anything to cops for free. They always figure to get something out of it. I think you'd better get out of here. Why oh, wouldn't I be a fool to do a thing like that? I'll report you. Go ahead. You know where the phone is. Please go. Please leave me alone. Stop it. What do you think I am? I told you to leave me alone. Now get out of here. All right. Night. And don't come back. Thanks for the apology, but you shouldn't have come back. Maybe not, but I couldn't leave things the way they were. Why not? Well, I, I just didn't want to give you the wrong impression, that's all. There's another reason I came around, too. Do you mind? This probably sounds corny, but uh, I get lonesome once in a while. I guess everybody does, and the idea of both of us coming from the same part of the country and, and both of us being alone. Yes, I know. It's a kind of a homesickness, I guess. We used to have a record of that, did you? Did you ever go to the um, football dances after the Terre Haute East Indianapolis games? I went to two of them. I bet you're a good dancer, too. We might have met right there in Terre Haute. Yeah, I guess we might have. We were, we were both dancing there on the same floor. We might have bumped into each other and didn't even know it. It could be, but I, I doubt it. Why? Because I'd have turned and looked and I'd have remembered your face. Even now I'd remember it. Things never, never turn out quite like that. I'd have taken just one look at you and, and I'd have asked you to dance. I'd ask your name, and you'd have told me. And I'd have told you how swell you danced. How pretty you were. I'd have liked that. But I'd have been scared. Maybe. But not for long. 
by now. Please don't. I mean it, Cliff. Please don't. Take a look at this. No future in being a cop. That's what some guys think. No money, and they just don't like the work. Well, I do. Rose quartz, one of the best specimens we've found. You see, it just depends on what you figure a, a cop's job really is. Now, huh? Oh, yes, 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 the history. You know, not far from where we found this is the site of one of the worst Indian massacres in the history of the whole Southwest. No kidding. Absolutely. Here. You see, I figure that the job of a cop is to protect lives. Now, some of these trigger-happy guys... Charles, Charles, dear. They think they have to protect things. Oh, uh, iron pyrites. That's fool's gold. That's the first specimen we found. Cost us $7.80 to have it assayed. Is that right? Charles, don't you think Webb's seen enough for tonight? Have you? No, no. The way Bud talks about it, it makes it sort of come alive. <laughs> sure. Here. You know... I've been on the force for 20 years. Almost time for me to retire. And I haven't shot a gun once, except on the range, of course. Oh, that one came from out in the Mojave Desert, a place called Calico. Used to be a real rip-roaring mining town. Now, hardly anybody knows it even exists. Why, even the coyotes... But the... Charles Webb has a date. Look at the way he's dressed up. Oh, no, no, no. Mm, he smells pretty, too. Oh, bud, these, uh... These rocks, I can see how they can kind of get you. Yeah. You can't kid me, Webb Garwood. Ought to be ashamed of yourself. Nice enough to come over here on his only night off and you chew his ear off about our silly old rocks. I know you're itching to leave. Well, get along with you wherever you're expected. Okay. I guess I have sort of outstayed my welcome. But that dinner was just wonderful, Grace. And uh, that, that uh, roast beef and the, the cake is... And just stuffed right up to here. Well, we'll uh, we'll take up where we left off, bud. See you, bud boy. Well, 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 Good well, night, uh, Webb. Good night. Be seeing you. I know. I was nasty to him, wasn't I? Well, you do kind of pick on him. Why? Well, maybe it's because he seems so bored. I never really listens when you talk, and and hates being a cop. Oh, for God. <laughs> What's got to do you anyway? Well, huh? what are you thinking about? Hey. Some news been added. Yeah, he bought it for me when I told him about the prowler. You got a permit for this pop gun? I don't know. Anyway, nobody's going to use it. That was stolen fun. And what could be sweeter than that? I can't stand the oily sound of that guy's voice. No, Webb. I have to listen because he always asks me how he was. I wish you'd sign off and come home and walk in that door and find us. What? We have to stop seeing each other. I'm scared. Because of what I just said? Maybe. Forget it, baby. I would just talk. Do you think I meant that? No, I guess not. I know how you feel, always sneaking around, never really feeling free. I feel the same way. I don't want to spend just one evening with you. I want to spend all of them. Oh, I do, too. My vacation begins tomorrow. Are you going away somewhere? Las Vegas. How long will you be gone? Two weeks. Two weeks? 
come with me. Oh, I couldn't. Why not? We could think up some excuse. There's a place I want you to see. It's, it's a sort of a thing that I've dreamed of owning someday. A motor court. Every time I hit Las Vegas, I take a good look at it just to make sure it's still there. You and I had something like that in each other. Our troubles be over. We wouldn't have to worry about anything as long as we live. I didn't know. Man's got a place like that. It's, it's working for him 24 hours a day. He mounts to something. He's got some position in the community. You know, we could, we could go to the mountains every summer, all summer long, and that motel would still be hauling in the dough. <laughs> Even when you're sleeping, it'd be making money for you. <laughs> oh, baby, you just gotta come to Las Vegas with me. That's the greatest little town in the world. You know I can't. Oh, I don't see that. Well, friends, that's our good night tune. And remember, folks, the cost of living is going down. Good night to everyone. I'll be seeing you, Susan. Well, do you come to Las Vegas or don't you? Well, there's no way I can, Webb. If you'd given me a little warning, I might have... That's the way it is. Let's forget about it. I knew you'd do this sometime. I knew it from the very beginning. If you were just a dame, it'd be different, Susan. But you're special. No, darling, no. There's a plane from here gets into Las Vegas every night at 7. Listen, Webb, you've got to listen to I'll me. I'll be there to meet you tomorrow night at 7. I don't care what kind of an excuse you have I to make. I can't, darling, please. You'll do it because you've got to. Tomorrow night at 7. Oh, Webb. Webb. Attention, please. Passenger witness. Step to the Western Airlines counter. Nine o'clock plane tonight. How about it? I'm very sorry about it, but that flight is all filled. It's well, wow, that's strange. Yeah, there are well, two sections on that flight 27. No, sir, only one tonight. If you'll give me your name, madam, I'll put you on the next flight. What time's the next uh, plane for the coast? Yep. 8:31, sir. If you'll give me your name, I'll put you put you down for another flight. Well, Salt Lake 20, please. Uh, your name, please, madam. I couldn't come. He's... Wait a minute. When did you find out? Yesterday. He's quit his job. How did he's... he find out? What does he know? Lots of things. He says little things. And when I tried to make an excuse to get away for, for a few days, he accused me. Did you admit anything? No. Good. But I couldn't convince him. He says if he ever caught me, he'd kill me. Oh, bluff. No, no, he means What does he want? The gas cage? After he killed me, he says he'd kill himself. That would be a good bargain. He wouldn't want to live anyhow. Oh, whether it would be my fault. He loves me. He's been so sweet to me, and I betrayed him. I lied to him. I felt so rotten. I wish I'd never seen you. I can't see you anymore. Did you hide that gun? I tried to, but it was gone. What a crazy fool. Webby, do it. I know he would. Did you have those lights on? No, Webby's awake. Susan. Slip in. I'll go around on the side of the house in case he starts anything. Susan. Where are you, Susan? Susan! I'm here, John. I, in the kitchen. I, I woke up and I, I was thirsty. I thought I heard talking. I thought I heard voices. You must have imagined it. Look, I heard you. Don't tell me I imagined it. You, you must have. It isn't even dawn yet. 
I know, baby, I know, but it's too risky for you, way too risky. I don't care, I don't care. We must see you. Yeah, but like you said, we better call it quits. You don't mean that, Whip. Yeah. Hello. Oh, darling, I've been trying and trying to get you. I know. Is there anybody with you? No. Please, Whip. Please, we have to meet somewhere just tonight. I mean, I just can't stand not seeing you. I just can't stand. I know, baby. It's tough for me, too. Don't you miss me? Sure, I miss you. I'm counting the days so I go back to work so I can get you out of my mind. I'm sorry, Susan, but you have to understand. I just can't take it anymore. We have to call it quits. The end. Fini. Quit? No, no. Yeah. It's open. Susan, you shouldn't have... Oh, Webb. Oh, Webb, take me away, wherever you want. Don't bring me back. Oh, it's crazy, I know, but I love you, Webb. I, I love you so much that I, I'm afraid of you. I, I asked him for a divorce. When? I begged, I pleaded. When was this? It, this afternoon. You told him about me? Well, not who you were. What did he say? He said that he'd never let me go under any conditions, ever. We have much choice, have we? We have, Webb. We have. Take me away now. Don't forget, Susan, you were brought up on Lakeview. You would begin to miss the things you're used to, your maid and the house. I couldn't give you any of that easy life stuff. Webb, I'd be happy with you no matter where we lived or how. So long as it's far away. We couldn't get far enough to forget him, Susan. He'd always be with us and between us. We could never really be man and wife. And then you'd... You'd start to hate me and that'd be worse than not having you at all. Who's saying no? That's why I haven't been answering your calls or trying to see you. I was, uh, I was gonna write it out for you. I suppose we'll always remember each other, at least. I know I'll always remember you, but it had to end sometime. Oh, what? The quicker the cut, the less it hurts. I was hoping you'd say this, Webb, and mean it. I'm glad you said it, because I've been too weak to say it myself. I've been wrong. I'd forgotten what it was like to have self-respect.
1833 Chevrolet. Thanks for checking me in. Forget it, bud. Shop 7016, no delay. Oh, Webb. Yeah? 131A, code one. You feeling okay? Yeah, why? Well, the last few days you've been acting like you sat on a cactus. Started right after your vacation. I told the old lady and she says you were just high strung, but I've been worried about it and tonight it seemed worse than ever. 16T, Roger. Thanks for worrying, but I guess it's nothing worse than uh, getting back in the swing of the job. <laughs> okay. But if there's anything I can do, just remember, little old Bud's always willing. Good night. All right. Mingo and Harvey. 10A, 14B will meet you. 10A, 14B will meet you. 49, 1918 Orchid. 49, check. Just dropped Crocker on my way to check in. 49, 1918 Orchid. Reports a prowler there. 1918 Orchid. Reports a prowler there. I'm on my way. Call homicide. I parked the car out in front of the Gilbury house. Naturally, I was ready for trouble. Then I saw something move out in the vacant lot. 
I guess he must have been there hunting for the prowler himself because uh, he stood up suddenly and, and uh, started to run. I pulled out my gun. I, I called halt three times. Then he uh, sort of whirled and turned and uh, I guess he was about 40 feet away. I saw he had his gun on me, so I, um, I fired just once. I was, I was trying to shoot low. And then he went down, so I, I ran over to him, and, and just as I, uh, got there and, and, uh, bent down, he sort of, uh, pushed himself up on one elbow and, and fired at me point blank. And um, then I, I uh, saw that he was dead. Murderer! You murderer! Get down! Please finish, Officer Garwood. Well, there isn't very much more. Uh, when I got a good look at him, I saw that he wasn't any prowler. He had his his uh, bathrobe and slippers on. And I... I knew that I'd made a terrible mistake. Do you remember anything else? No, sir, nothing. Witness will be excused. Mrs. John Gilbray. So you've never seen her before, huh? Do you solemnly no. swear to no, tell never. the truth, the whole truth, and nothing? The way I heard it. Help you, God. I do. I hope you will understand, uh, Mrs. Gilbray. The purpose of this hearing is to learn the whole truth of the shooting. And if you have any reason to believe there was an irregularity on the part of Officer Garwood, it is your duty so to state. You understand that, don't you? I understand. A minute ago, in the presence of the jury, you made an accusation. I was upset. Oh, I see. Now, would you recount the events of that night as you recall them? Well, when I... When I heard the first shot, I... Uh, could you speak a little louder, Mrs. Gilbray? I ran towards the front door. There. And when I when I reached the door, I heard the second shot. And I ran outside and I saw what happened. Officer Garwood, would you please stand up and face the witness? Now, will you please tell us, Mrs. Gilray, whether you ever saw this man prior to the death of your husband? Well, I... No. You may sit down. Officer Crocker, will you please rise and face the witness? Had you ever seen this man before the death of your husband? Well I, well, I may have seen him. I, I'm not at all certain. As a matter of fact, wasn't there a prowler around your house some two months ago? And didn't officers Crocker and Garwood come to your house after you called the police? Well, yes, there were two officers who, who came to the house. One of them might have been the gentleman there. And the other might have been Officer Garwood. Well, one of them was well, the officers who was outside most of the time, and I, I was very frightened. Why are you asking me all this? You may sit down. One of the two officers here recalled the previous prowler call and brought it to my attention. Since there had been a prowler around the house before, it would perhaps be quite natural for your husband to be alarmed by the second one, wouldn't it? Yes. Now, Mrs. Gilvray, have you any reason whatsoever to believe that the circumstances attending your husband's death were other than those described by Officer Garwood? No. 
Thank you. Now, you may step down from the stand. You must be getting old. I've known you to forget faces, but a figure like that? Verdict is accidental homicide. That is your verdict? It is. Thank you very much. The jury is dismissed. The inquest is concluded and will be so entered in the records of this office. Do you care to make any statement about the shooting officer? Uh, Congratulations. Officer? Oh, I'm afraid it isn't officer anymore. I, um, I resigned from the force a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I know. I read about it in the papers. Sorry to hear it. Uh, Mr. Gilbray, uh, I have a kind of problem. I, I wonder if you could help me out on it. I'll be glad to if I can. Well, it's just that, um, tell me, how, how's she, uh, how's your sister-in-law taking it by now? Well, as well as can be expected. Those things take time, you know. I, I uh, sent her some flowers, but she sent them back. I guess it was the wrong thing to do, but I just can't seem to get this thing out of my head. Oh, well, if I were you, I wouldn't It doesn't seem to be any way I can help at all. You know, with the house and everything, I, I guess she'll have enough to get by on. That is when it's all settled up, but uh, in the meantime, if, if she needs any ready cash, it's not much considering what's happened. It's only a little over $700, but well, if she'll accept it... Mr. Garwood, that's just about the most decent thing I've ever heard a man say. And I'm going to tell her about it, too. But just so you won't feel quite so bad. You know, uh, you couldn't exactly say that uh, their marriage was perfect. No. No. My brother, well, <laughs> between you and me, he wasn't the easiest person in the world to get along with, and, and well, she wanted children, and, uh, well, he couldn't have any. And so, you see, it wasn't as if it was a happy marriage even before the accident. It's no matter how much money we've got, we've all got our worries. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if, um, there's a lot I'd like to get off my chest. Do you suppose she'd see me? Well, I don't know why she shouldn't. The wife and I, we're spending a little time with her, and, uh, I tell you what, I'll talk to her about it, and I'll let you know. Will you do that? I, sure. I don't appreciate that so much. Uh, how about a soda? No, thanks. Thanks so much. Good night. Good night. right in there. We're packing. I told her you were coming sometime this afternoon. Uh, you can go right on in. I'll go down the street and call on a neighbor. My husband said it would be much more comfortable for both of you if you talked alone. I see. Thank you very much. Stay away from me, Webb. Don't ever come near me. Say anything you want to say. I can take it. I haven't anything to say.
I know how terrible it's been for you, Susan, but no matter how bad it was, you can't let an accident stand between you. Accident? Accident, yes. Don't you believe that? Well, I... I don't know what I believe. When you lied for me on the stand, when you said you'd never seen me before, you didn't think you were lying to save a murderer, did you? Well, I don't... I don't know what I believe. I... You believed I was guilty. You must have. Oh, no, I... I wasn't sure. There, there were other reasons. What other I... reasons? What other reasons could there be? Well, I can't tell you. They're, they're too important. You really thought I was guilty, didn't you? Don't you know me any better than that? I know you, Susan. I know if you really thought I murdered him, you'd have told him. You wouldn't have covered up for a murderer, Susan. You couldn't. If it was an accident, it was so terribly convenient. Look, do you remember that, that medal that I used to wear? That sharpshooter's medal? And how much I used to like guns? Well, after what I've been through. It's like running some innocent kid down in the street. You never want to drive a car again. I couldn't bring myself to touch a gun again as long as I live. Look at it this way. If it wasn't an accident, what reason did I have? You'd already offered to come away with me, hadn't you? And I decided that wasn't right. Maybe that was my mistake. Maybe if I'd said yes and we'd run out on him, we'd all have been happier. Oh, no, he'd keep... rather be the way he is than alive and alone. It's not his, his dying. I can't forget it. It's what led up to it. You used to say he was... Ordinary, though, to you he was. I didn't argue with you. I began to believe it myself. I almost began to hate him. Did hate him. And not because of what he was doing to me, but because of what I was doing to him. Then he was killed. I'll never be sent to jail or... Condemned to die for what I've done. I've been praying that I would be. Susan. Suppose I hadn't known you, not at all. Suppose I was just the cop on the beat. It happened anyway. It'd be just the same now as far as he's concerned. Only you'd be alone. And so would I. Let's face it. If having him dead is the only way we can be together, happily together, I'm glad he's dead. If I'd realized that was the only way, I don't know, I, I might have killed him. That's how much I want you. The whole thing turned on a freak accident. You've got to believe that, Susan. Well, look at me. I didn't do it, Susan. I'll swear that by the only thing I ever really loved, and that's you. It's your turn. You've got to tell me you believe. Oh, I do. I do. I do. I do. Baby. Oh, I do. Give him a break. Give him a break there. You must be William Gilbreth. <laughs> That's right. How do you uh, feel about this union, Mr. Gilbreth? Well, I was just telling Mr. Crocker here, as long as the kids love each other, why shouldn't they be married? Let's forget the past. That's what I say. How about a picture of you and the missus, huh? Why, sure. Come on, Marty. <laughs> Hold enough. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Wonderful guy, your Webb. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> hey, Webb. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. I got to tell this. <laughs> This fellow Webb, this fellow Webb here, well, you know what happened to my brother? Well, after that, he came into my store one day, and with his entire savings, 
his entire savings, mind you, and he wanted to give them to Susan here. <laughs> Pretty doggone square of him, I'd say. He's the squarest guy I know. So long, Webb. So long, bud. So long, Susan. So long. Take good care of him, gal. Well, goodbye, darling. And do be happy you deserve Oh, Webb. Remember, that country around Las Vegas, best place in the state for rock. I remember, bud. <laughs> so long. Hey, you Look take care of yourself, kid. Look this way. Goodbye. <laughs> Check over at the office. I'll be back in a minute. Don't be long. Have you noticed I haven't been drinking very much lately? No. Since when? Two or three weeks. Why not? Are there any units here with more rooms than this one? Yeah, a couple. Why? Well, you better start making arrangements for one of them. We're going to need more space by summer. Are you, are you saying what I think you're saying? In just those words. <laughs> How long's this been going on? Four months. And nobody knew.
What's the matter? Aren't you glad? Sure. Sure, I'm... Please come over and kiss me. Go on and, and get some sleep. Susan. Yes. You've known for four months, you say, about the baby? Yes. Why didn't you tell me before this? You know you and I can't have a baby yet. What are you talking about? We're going to. It's what I've always wanted. The minute that baby's born, we're in trouble, both of us. I don't know what you mean. Because we won't have been married long enough for it to be mine. And it couldn't have been your husband's. How do you know? Your brother-in-law, your ex-brother-in-law. Oh, I didn't know John had told him. He did, both him and his wife. Well, we could keep it a secret. They're a long way off. They'd never have to know. They'll know right along with everybody else. What about those reporters this afternoon and the photographers? Cop Mary's widow of, of Manny killed. Don't you think the birth of the dead man's baby is going to make even a better story? It's not his, it's ours. Sure, and they'll all know that. I don't care who knows it. Look, do I, do I have to draw a picture for you? When that baby is born, they'll know that you and I were seeing each other long before the killing. Well. And they'll remember your testimony that you'd never seen me before in your life. How do you think that's going to look? An ambulance. What are we going to do? We could get away from here before anybody has a chance to notice. We'll go where we're not known. I could have my baby there. It'll be the record of the birth certificate, the record of the doctor's report, the record of the hospital. We will give a false name. Then we'll take the baby to some home and, and pretend to adopt it later. They'd have seen those pictures in the scandal sheets. They'd recognize you. Even the doctor who performed the delivery could appear as a witness against you later on. It's a chance we could risk it. He'd have a little talk with a local sheriff, a query he'd go through. You want me to take it from there for you? Headquarters, attention, chief of police. Case of Officer Garwood. <laughs> but what could they find? Chief of detectives, homicide bureau. Please oblige with records of Gilvery inquest. But they know all that. Officer Crocker, report immediately. A few questions and he'd begin to think. And they'd locate that ex-brother-in-law of yours and his wife. And they'd talk. But that's all they could do. Oh, they'd know we'd both lied. There'd be cops from homicide on the next plane. People can't be convicted of something they didn't do. Well, that's a nice theory, only it doesn't work. Juries decide these things, and juries are made up of human beings. I want you to think about something just for a minute. All right. Try to remember how close you came to believing that I was guilty. Well. Yeah. Then think, if that baby was born, what a time we'd have with all that evidence against us. Well, 
where we'll go somewhere where we're, nobody's around, where we'll be absolutely alone. You would be my doctor, Webb. No. Now, that'd be too dangerous for you. Millions of women have babies without doctors. But you had training, haven't you? Yes, but not enough. There might, there might be complications. Now, that, that's too risky. It's way too risky. Well, if I'm not afraid, why should you be? <laughs> Let's go, Tom. We're lucky. No one could have been in or out of here for months. Disposal. Got news for you. I'm fresh out of needles. Secrets. John had it made to order. thought about it. Don't be. No. We're really, uh, really prepared for triplets. I don't think we've forgotten a thing. Would you like to go out for a little walk? Oh, loving 
sunset. This would be a good story for him to tell his buddies. His birth increased the population of his hometown by 33 and one third percent. You could go for miles in any direction, find nobody with close relatives. That's one of the things we won't ever be able to tell him. Oh. Uh, that kid's gonna be on the beam from the second he gets into this world. The breaks he gets are gonna be good, not like his old man. Everybody has bad breaks once in a while, just so we teach him to overcome them. Jack, just so long as he's man enough to overcome them. And next time, Ma, the biggest private room in the best hospital in Vegas. <laughs> Nurses round the clock. Flowers, doctors, nothing but the best. <laughs> so beautiful. They say that's important. I mean, for the mother. Old Bud Crocker used to say there's something about the desert that... Maybe there'll be a moon. I hope so, don't you? Well, Holmes, almost time for signing off. But still time to tell you about the wife's receipt for plump, it's one tender little ranch... John's records. He must have got mixed She in. likes nothing better than fresh garden-grown parsley and a few of our ice-crisp hearts of celery. And the cost of living is going down. Good night to everyone. I'll be seeing you, Susan. <coughs> Web Garwood here? Oh, the Garwoods are away on a vacation. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry to hear that. We're on our way home ourselves. We're hoping to meet them. Oh, Crocker's the name. How do you do? <laughs> well, this here's my war department. Oh, of course. You're the people who sent the wire. Yeah. Well, it seems they stay right in Frisco all the time. You know how young folks are. It's a big town. They like excitement. Oh, well, this last one here is from Boston. Says they're kind of stuck on that desert country. There's no need to expect him home for about two more weeks. Far still, huh? I bet Webb's gonna take in one of my ghost towns. He used to pass the time telling him what I know about that country. Gold rush, land grabs. Mineral Canyon, you reckon? Or Calico. Oh, no. Mineral Canyon. Calico's the tail end of creation. Not even the coyotes will stop at Calico. <laughs> now, Mineral Canyon, that's real pretty. Hey, how about it? On the off chance of meeting up with him. I'm game. Okay. Is he driving a Chevy? Oh, no. They got a new Cadillac sedan, dark green. A caddy, huh? He sure made it. Yes, sir, he sure made it now. Well, if we miss him, tell him that Bud was by. Little old Bud, he'll know. Sure will. Come on, honey. Okay. Susan, I'm going to get the doctor. I'll be all right. I'll be all right.
Something must be wrong, Susan. Having a baby isn't supposed to be like this. Something may happen to you. I'm going to get the doctor. No, it... No! no. Webb, you said yourself there can't be a witness. just down the block. He's the finest, most obliging young doctor you want to meet. And besides, he needs a business bill. But you're the one I want, Doc. You'll just have to take my word for it. I wish I could, son. I can't. Most people don't know an emergency when they see one. Okay, this now doctor... will you believe me? Well, looks like I'll have to go, Eddie. I'm sorry, dear. What am I going to do if Mrs. Lawson calls? Well, I don't know what we'll do. Drive carefully, dear. Yeah. Better come in my car, Doc. I know the way. I'll take my own. It's right out here in the street. I may have a call to make on the way back. You go ahead. I'll follow you. to have lied to me about where you're going, how far it was. You'll be all right now, little lady. Let's just put this under your head. Wife will be quite all right. The baby's heartbeats are normal. There won't be much uh, happening in there for an hour or so. Meantime, I've given her something that should help. She'd uh, like to see you, but be sure she stays quiet. What if he recognizes us, Webb? He won't. It turned out lucky. He won't recognize us. You were so sure before that someone, anyone oh, might... He's an old man. He can't even see so good. He might have known who we are right off. Perhaps he knows our names right this minute. Stop imagining things. Take my word. Don't worry about it. Well, 
You were so frightened before. Now you're not. Why? What is this, the third degree? Is it because of the gun? You said you'd never touch one again. Ever. What are you driving at? If he recognizes us, you'll use it. Won't you? Are you crazy? Maybe you'll use it anyway, just to make sure. Is that why you're so certain? Is it? You're really crazy. You plan to kill him. Don't you? Take it easy, baby. You're all upset. No one would have known. No one. Not even I would have known. It would have been perfect. Perfect. Just like the other time. Worse. That was a reason last time. You loved me. You did. Didn't you? Well, of course I loved you. I always will. What are you raving about? You haven't denied it. Denied what? Killing my husband. <sighs> well, that's no secret. Of course I killed him. That's public record. I mean, not accidentally. I mean... Oh, cut it out, Susan. Oh. You're all mixed up here. You're bound to be. Oh. The doc said you were supposed to keep quiet now. <sighs> hey, doc. We'll talk about this tomorrow, in the daylight. You got to think about yourself, you know. You you got to. I mean, you got to think about the kid. You... Well, Doc, my my wife is kind of kind of excited. Maybe you better see what you can do. Boy, a little girl. Your wife is fine. It was a normal birth. It's just like her mother. You know, they say this is about the happiest time of a person's life. Do they? Yeah, that's what they say. What can I get you? More milk? A little coffee? Maybe I could whip the doc and me up a celebration breakfast. How about that, huh? Hey, Doc! Webb! seeing your face in the newspaper. Why didn't he go last night? He waited till he could take the baby with him. In ten minutes, he'll be on his way back here with the cops. Wait a minute. There was another key. There was a spare. Sure there was. You had it, didn't you? Where is it? Okay, he's, he's too far ahead. I couldn't catch up with him now. But unless I hit that highway before they start back, I'm... Where is it, Susan? Where is that key? You've got to tell me. You murdered my husband. You would have killed a doctor. So what? So I'm no good. Well, I'm no worse than anybody else. You work in a store, you knock down on the cash register. A big boss, the income tax. Ward healer, you sell votes. A lawyer, take bribes. I was a cop. I used a gun. But whatever I did, I did for you. That first night, remember? I came back by myself. Why do you think I did that? And last night, I brought the doctor. Walked right into town and stuck my head in the nose. Why do you think I did that? Because I loved you, Susie. Say anything you want to, but you got to give me credit for that. Like I gave you credit before. How am I any different from those other guys? Some do it for a million, some for ten. I did it for sixty-two thousand. You knew about the money. 
You knew the exact amount. Sure I knew. I read his will when there while his dumb voice was drooling over the radio. Do you take me for a sucker? Get out. Get out. You haven't got a chance. Take it! Yes. 